When you memorize something, you're learning on piano really well to the point where it feels more like you just know it rather than having to really try hard to remember it. It allows you to be much freer to put all your attention on how to play it, focusing on your technique, on the performance and how to actually make it sound as good as it can. But it can be tough to memorize stuff in the beginning. So I've got six really important and actionable tips for you to help you get better and more confident at memorizing music. Just before we get started, jump down in the comments and let me know if you have any other helpful tactics you think might help someone else out, or let me know which method on this list you think might help you out the most. Okay, so the first tip is basically not to put too much on your plate at once. Make sure that you're taking small snippets at a time and gradually building it up. Could be a short phrase, a fragment of the melody, or perhaps just a couple of chords at a time, whatever makes sense for what it is you're learning. And then that small little fragment doesn't seem like so much to try and memorize. It's not too much information to process. So we're building it up with manageable chunks so it actually works and makes your memory of it stronger. If you try and do too much, it's just not that effective. You're kind of like overloading your brain with information and in the end, none of it will sink in. Make sure you get the first bit confident before you move on to the next, then try and get both of them together and so on, gradually adding on a little bit more. You probably won't wanna do a whole piece in one sitting. Do a little chunk one day, sleep on it, let it sink in, come back to it, make sure that that's still there, and then at your own pace, gradually expand it. If there's any particular bits that feel a bit harder to memorize, then put more time into them. The second tip is about practice. Now, everyone knows you have to practice to get good at stuff, there's nothing new there. But what I found really helps, particularly with memorizing things, is to practice little and often, rather than trying to just cram too much into longer sessions. I found that a lot of people get mentally fatigued if they practice the same thing for too long and it just doesn't stick as well. But when you keep coming back to things, particularly with a sleep in between to rest and process what you've learned, I found that not only when you come back to it, you're much sharper anyway, but you're constantly just reinforcing that information and reminding yourself of all the little things you have to think about and just keeping it really present in your mind. Try not to leave too big a gaps between practice sessions because you end up spending time just trying to get back to where you were, which can be a bit discouraging. If you can, try and get a practice session in every day or most days, or if you are really busy in between your proper practice sessions, try and squeeze in just like a minute or a couple of minutes just to have a quick run through the motions, just to keep it fresh so that when you do have a proper practice session, it's kind of ready to go. The next tip is to try and recognize things in the music you're playing, scales, chords, and chord progressions and other musical elements you use and understand it as much as you can with what you currently know about music. Latching onto patterns and seeing familiar shapes and things on the keyboard makes memorizing much easier. It's more like learning and memorizing in your own language that way, which would always work better because it's all familiar and it makes more sense rather than just trying to recite long sequences of what feels like random notes. For a beginner, the first thing is knowing what key you're in, then actually picturing that scale on the piano, keeping track of where in the scale things are happening, and this gives you much more context for the notes you're playing, so everything doesn't feel so random, and then it becomes more like wandering around a city where you actually recognize the landmarks and aren't so lost. So if you're in D major, for example, and you can see this scale shape confidently as an established thing in your mind that you're using, then everything you do in that scale is easier to follow. It gives you a context for the notes and where they are. Of course, this is a really good reason to practice scales and actually think about them when you're playing music. Another really useful thing to spot is when notes you're playing come from chords. They may be played in some kind of pattern or broken up. A great example of that would be this part of Fur Release. So there's just two chords here. The first one is A minor. It just uses A's, C's and E's, the notes in an A minor chord. Then it goes to an E major, just using E's, G sharps, and B's. And then back to an A minor. So I'm just thinking about two chords and then the patterns that happen inside them, which reminds me what to play rather than a whole load of individual notes. It's much easier to memorize because all the notes kind of make sense to me. Chunking that information, a whole group of notes into one chord name is much more, it's much quicker to process and makes it easier to memorize. This is one reason I put loads of emphasis on the channel to practice chords and inversion shapes and scales and stuff like that, because familiarity with these sorts of shapes and positions, being able to recognize these things easier. And then when you keep seeing Seeing these things again and again in music makes everything much quicker to learn. So you want to be practicing finding chords, your broken chords, 
chords of the key as well, chords that fit inside the scale, how to build chords, all the theory side of it, chord inversions. I've got loads of that kind of content on the channel. I'll put a bunch of helpful links in the description below to some videos you can watch after this. The more you understand music, you come across moments where it completely makes sense that that's what it would be. So it's like you don't actually have to completely rely on your memory 100% of the time. Basically, if you're trying to work out or remember what happens next, it's kind of like your knowledge just tells you where to look. It doesn't all have to be theory based. We can just try and spot visual patterns as well. Even just spotting a repeated pattern in how maybe a melody moves is gonna help you memorize something that much easier. So maybe something like this. Or just thinking about how the shapes morph. If I was to play this chord progression, I'm actually just concentrating on the way that the shapes morph as well. So if I get my starting point, just a regular root position chord shape, then I'm thinking about the bottom note going down and the top two notes staying where they are. That moves down. Then I'm thinking about the bottom note going down again and then forming another root position shape from there. And then I'm thinking about the bottom note going down a third and then the shape that it makes from there. So I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on how the shapes morph and how they move around. The next tip is to try and overcome a common thing that can trip us up, myself included sometimes, even when we have practiced a fair bit. Occasionally we all have a complete blank how to get started, even though we may think we know it. It could be the very beginning of the piece or the start of the next section, the next hand position, the next chord maybe. It then makes you feel like you've completely forgotten the whole thing. But what I found is teaching a lot of people that once they re-remember or re-read or whatever it is, those first few notes, it kind of sets you off and that reminds you of what comes next, where to move to next because it's like we're used to the sequence of what to play. So if those starting points is a barrier to memorizing things well, then let's especially put some practice into memorizing those starting points which help us get going, using markers or specifically practicing the very opening parts of sections. So it could just be like the first hand position, let's say the first chord was an F major and we were playing it like this. Let's specifically remember that exact position that we're going to use and then maybe it's the first chord of the next section was this. Practice just playing those individual bits separately which help set you off in the flow of the rest of things. It could be anything, it could be just the first melody note. Pick on bits that you specifically struggle with the most of course. So if it was Fur Elise, it would be the opening bit. So make sure that you always know exactly where to start, the A down here and you're making that chord shape, the E up here in the right hand. It's often like a bit that feels a little bit separate where you get stuck starting again. So the next bit in Fur Elise that I'd practice separately would be this. So on its own, practice finding that, the starting note on B and the run up and then the broken C in the left hand. The next tip is to use your ears. We don't just ever want to rely on muscle memory, we just talked about relying on your musical knowledge and the visual side recognising things. But at the end of the day, music is something we listen to and even as a beginner, there's some things you can do with your ears to help you memorise things better. Firstly, just listen to a recording of whatever it is you're learning on repeat. Get the sound of it, the structure, the flow of it all completely stuck in your head. That's going to help a lot more than you think. I bet there's so many songs on the radio where without even realising it, you're listening to it and you just you're singing along or whatever and you just know what comes next. Well that's going to help remind you when you're actually playing but it's really easy particularly as a beginner to have all your attention just focus on looking at your hands and what your fingers are doing and forgetting to listen so we need to actively be listening to ourselves when we're playing too. As a beginner, there's a few basic things that can help remind you what to play when you actually keep an idea of the sound it's meant to be in your head. There's the shape of the melody or the pattern or whatever it is you're playing. So listen out for the way it moves up and down or stays on the same note. For example, this. Even if you just think roughly about the shape, I'm hearing it go up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then the next bit would be, stays the same. Up, down, up, down, 
Just keeping your ear on the shape is gonna help guide you which way to move. And with more experience of playing, ear training, working out melodies by ear, improvisation, writing music and all that kind of stuff, your ears get better and better at hearing the details in how melodies move, just how far through the scale they move, when they stick inside the scale, when they go out, where in the scale they are, where the notes land in relation to the chord you're on at the time. Now, of course, that may seem like a way off and take a lot of experience to get there, but for now, just at least imagine how that could work. Maybe hear the difference between something that sounds like a scale movement, or like a leaping in thirds movement, like through a chord. There's lots of other things to keep your ears out for, even just hearing when chords change helps remind you to move. When th uh, thinking about the range of the piano that things happen in, sometimes I've seen people struggling to remember what goes next and they're looking in the completely wrong area. They might be looking to try and find what to do next around the middle area of the piano, when if they heard it in their head, it should remind them that actually, it's low notes that they should be playing. The theory side and the visual side of finding chords and things goes very much hand in hand with ear training because you have to you know, learn what everything is called and actually be able to play it as well. But when you start actively practicing, trying to work out melodies by ear, simple improv, listening to chord types, trying to figure out chords and chord progressions. So the more experience you have, the more you get used to the sound of this stuff, the more it's gonna jog your memory as to what happens next. And again, it's going to make sense what happens next, which is easier to memorize. The last tip is to write out the structure of whatever it is you're learning to help visualize and really get a picture of the order of things in your head. So if it's a song that might be like double verse, chorus, single verse, double chorus, bridge, that kind of thing. Sometimes songs have quirky things like the first chorus might have a, a four bar instrumental bit after it, but the second one doesn't. Those little things can be tricky to memorize sometimes, but I often find that writing it out clearly really helps it stick. It's also helpful to write out a chord chart, which doesn't tell you exactly what notes to play or how to play the chords, but it's just a shorthand for what the chords are, what the chord progression is, and helps remind you and memorize it. If you're learning a classical piece, you might be using that specific more formal structure, but even just labeling things like A section, B section, and C section can really be helpful sometimes. That makes it easier to practice one section at a time, as well as stitching the whole thing together too. But when you do that, just to make sure that you focus on often what I found to be sometimes the weak link in the chain, and that's the transitions between the sections. I often get my students to practice the transitions on their own if there's something tricky going on. I hope that was helpful. Like I say, let me know in the comments if you have any other interesting tips to help memorize things. It'd be interesting to know any tips that you have. And just to remind you, like I said at the beginning, it is like a muscle that gets stronger with more experience of learning how music works. And the more you practice memorizing stuff, the easier it does get to memorize things. Thanks for watching.